You could believe in germs, and then it's still a further question. Well, are there witches? Witches are an extra thing in addition to germs. So this is a video on chapter 17 of Schaefer Landau's book, Whatever Happened to Good and Evil. Uh, but in order to understand the arguments that are being discussed in this chapter, you really have to understand the distinction between descriptive claims and normative claims. And you also have to understand what Occam's razor is. So I've made other videos about both of those. You need to watch those videos first or else everything you're gonna hear right here is not gonna make any sense. So go watch those two videos, and then come back and watch this video, and then you will understand what happens in chapter 17 of the Schaefer Landau book. Let's start by recapping what moral objectivism and moral skepticism are. They're really actually only claims about one type of thing objective moral facts. The moral objectivist says that there are some objective moral facts. Um, objective moral facts. How about that? There. Um, whereas the moral skeptic says that there are none. There are no objective moral facts. As you'll remember from the video about Occam's razor, the difference between the moral objectivist and the moral skeptic is the presence of one type of item in their ontology. Your ontology, you'll remember, is a sort of list of the things that you think are real, that exist in the universe, right? And so you've got tables on there. You believe that there are tables. You believe that there are mountains. Those are real things. You believe that there are people. People are real. And then the question is, are there also objective moral facts or moral laws. Are there those things also? Is this item there? If you think that there are objective moral facts, then you're a moral objectivist. If you think that there are no objective moral facts or no objective moral laws at all, then you're some kind of moral skeptic. And so what we get in this chapter is discussion of a certain argument. And it's an argument that goes from Occam's razor to the claim that there are no objective moral facts, right? And therefore, it supports moral skepticism and rejects moral objectivism. It's an argument against moral objectivism. And we'll call it, well, as Schaefer Landau does, the argument from Occam's razor. Again, I know I've said this already. You need to go watch the video on Occam's razor if you haven't watched it already. Here's the thing, do we need to appeal to objective moral facts in order to explain the things that we observe? Here's an example. Someone is walking through the forest and there's a tree. The tree looks like this and it's got branches or something, okay? And on one of the branches is a nest. It's like a bird's nest. And then on the floor is a, is a bird. I don't know how to draw a bird. Um, but it's lying on the ground of the forest. And someone is walking by. And this person walks by, and they see the wounded bird. The bird fell from the nest, hit the ground, and, and hurt his or her wing. OK. So the person is walking by. They see the wounded bird. They pick the bird up. They bandage its wing, and they put it back in the nest. That's nice. That was a, ni that was a nice thing to do. OK, um, well, what do we need to explain this? What do we need to believe in in order to explain what we observed? Well, we need to believe that there are birds. Birds have to exist. But we already believe that. Of course there are birds, right? And we need to believe in, well, people. People have to exist. We also are going to need to believe in feelings. Feelings? Feelings are real, right? We believe in feelings um, or thoughts. So for example, the person who's walking by and decides to pick up the bird and bandage its wing, uh, that person had some thoughts and some feelings about the bird. OK, that's fine. Um, but what else do we need to make this explanation? Well, here's two competing explanations for this. One explanation 
is that there's a moral law out there. And the moral law says that if it doesn't cost you very much at all in time or resources, then you must help other living creatures to survive and, and flourish in the world. Maybe that's the moral law. Well, maybe the person who is walking through the forest knows about the moral law. The moral law exists, it's out there, and this person is in touch with it. They can sense it. They know what the moral law is. And they see the bird and they realize, oh, the moral law requires me to help this bird. So I'm gonna help this bird, and they decide to help the bird, they get out their bandages, they wrap the wing, and they put it back up. That's one explanation for what happened, why this person acted this way. But there's another explanation, right, on which, well, what happened is that the person saw the bird and they felt bad for the bird. They had certain feelings. It made, it made this person sad to see the bird on the ground suffering. And so they picked up the bird and bandaged their wing and put them back and they felt better about it and the bird was happier. That's what happened. That's why they did it. They had some feelings, right? That's an alternative explanation. Here's a third explanation. On this explanation, there may or may not be a moral law, but this person thinks there's a moral law. They think that there's a moral law requiring them to help other living creatures, and so they see the bird, they realize that the moral law that they think exists, it might or might not actually exist, right, requires them to help the bird, and so they bend over, pick up the bird, bandage the wing, put the bird back in the nest. All right, right? That's the, the case where they, they think there's a moral law. Notice something. These two explanations, these two here, they don't mention the existence of objective moral facts. This thing, right? They don't mention that. Yet they can explain what's going on, right? They just require the existence of feelings and thoughts and birds and people and trees or whatever, right? So Occam's razor, remember Occam's razor says that you should adopt the explanation that is simplest, right? And that requires the existence of the fewest entities. So Occam's razor says you should adopt one of these explanations. Because this explanation requires you to add an item to your ontology that might not have already been there, that wasn't already there. You weren't sure prior to this whether there are objective moral facts. And you can explain everything without appeal to them. Say also that you can explain, well, everything you observe, not just this one incident with the bird and the person helping the bird, but everything, everything you've ever seen in your whole life, everything that every scientist has ever observed through a telescope or a microscope, you can explain it all without ever appealing to objective moral facts. Well then, you're following Occam's razor, you never add moral facts objective moral facts, universal ones that are out there in nature, independent of what anyone thinks about it, you never add those to your ontology, so you don't believe that they exist. That, according to this argument, is the right way to think. That is, you don't need to appeal to objective moral facts to explain anything, so you shouldn't believe in objective moral facts. So, moral objectivism is false, and moral skepticism is true. That's the argument. Okay, so Schaefer Landau, you'll remember because we've read chapters from this book already in this course, is a defender of moral objectivism. So he, if he's not going to change his view midway through the book, he's going to need a response to this argument from Occam's Razor. He has three responses. I'm gonna talk about each of them very briefly. The first response well, it says that Occam's razor is just too powerful. It's too powerful because if we use Occam's razor like this, then we're gonna have to get rid of not only objective moral facts, but actually everything else that's already on this list. Almost all of the things that are in most of our ontologies. Why is that? Well, it seems like you can explain everything just by appeal to atoms or not even for that matter, smaller than atoms, subatomic particles, protons and neutrons and electrons. Or for that matter, things smaller than that, quarks, right? I don't actually know how to spell quarks, right? Maybe it's just uh, quarks. I don't know. 
Quarks, supposedly, are what make up protons and neutrons, I think. Maybe they don't make up electrons, or maybe they do. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Anyway, let's say that these are the things that make up all the subatomic particles, which are the things that make up the atoms, which are the things that make up, uh, well, the molecules, which make up everything, right? Well, you can explain everything in terms of quarks. You can explain why people pick up birds in terms of quarks, because people do things with their hands, which are made of quarks, and the hands move, of course, because of neurons and neurotransmitters firing in their brain, and those neurons are just made up of quarks. So why did this person pick up the bird? Well, because of some quarks. Some quarks moved in a certain way, right? And you can tell a whole story, and you never have to mention people, or birds, or feelings, or thoughts, or any of that. So, if you understand Occam's razor in this way, the way that the moral skeptic seems to be understanding it when using Occam's razor as an argument against the existence of objective moral facts, if you use Occam's razor in this way, then the only thing you're going to believe in are quarks. You're going to get rid of all of that. But that's crazy thinks Schaefer Landau. So it must be too powerful. We must be uh, using Occam's razor incorrectly, or maybe Occam's razor is false. Now, I have to admit, I don't think that this argument that Schaefer Landau gives against the argument from Occam's razor is good. I think that there's a kind of mistake. To see this, remember the example of disease uh, from the other video about Occam's razor. We could either explain disease in terms of witches, witches who cast spells making some people sick, or we could explain disease in terms of germs. Now notice something. What's the relationship between witches and germs? They're different things, witches and germs. Germs are teeny tiny creatures that get inside your body and make you sick. And witches, those are like people, I guess women, uh, who have supernatural powers. And they, uh, you know, use those powers by uh, saying things that they read out of books or something, I don't really know. Anyway, they're just totally different things. You could believe in germs, and then it's still further question, well, are there witches? Witches are an extra thing, in addition to germs. But that's not the case for quarks and other things, like germs. Germs, germs are just tiny little organisms, they're made up of quarks, right? Like, how many quarks are in a germ? I have no idea. A trillion? A trillion quarks? Sure, that sounds fine, right? If you believe in all of the quarks, and all of them moving around, there are all these quarks and they move around in certain ways, well, then you can believe in germs, because germs are just some quarks, arranged in a certain shape, and moving in certain ways, and interacting in certain ways. There's nothing more to a germ than just a pile of quarks. That's it. So. If Occam's razor says that you should stop believing in everything except for quarks, it's not obvious that that means that you stop believing in germs. You might still believe in germs because germs are just piles of quarks. Whereas, if Occam's razor says that you should believe in a whole bunch of stuff, including germs, you might not believe in witches because witches aren't made up of germs, whereas germs are made up of quarks. So, it's not true that if you use Occam's razor to get rid of objective moral facts or to get rid of witches, that you also lose things like germs and tables and mountains and people because you only believe that quarks exist. If you only believe that quarks exist, well then you very well might still believe in tables or mountains or people. Or germs. Okay, anyway, that is the first of the three arguments that Schaefer Landau gives against the argument from Occam's razor, right? He's trying to defend moral objectivism. Let's get to the next one. The next argument, well, you can only understand this argument if you realize that this use of Occam's razor to eliminate objective moral facts is, well, it's more uh, encompassing than it appears. If it gets rid of moral facts, then it also gets rid of other normative facts. You'll remember normative laws, normative facts, normative entities. You'll remember from the video on the distinction between the descriptive and the normative that there's at least three types of normativity. There's moral normativity, there's 
prudential normativity, and there's epistemic normativity. The reason, according to this argument, that you shouldn't believe in moral normativity is that you don't need to appeal to objective moral facts in order to explain anything. Nothing that you observe, nothing that scientists have found, relies on the existence of objective moral facts. But nor does anything that you've ever observed or that scientists have ever discovered rely on the existence of objective prudential facts or objective facts of epistemic rationality. These are all facts about how things ought to be or how they should be. And those facts don't explain anything. You don't need them to explain why people behave certain ways. You can always appeal to what people think about what they ought to do to explain people's behavior. And you never need to appeal to objective facts about what they ought to do to explain their behavior. So it seems like if this argument from Occam's razor, if this argument works, then it works against all normativity. But Schaefer Landau points out, that's way too powerful because epistemic normativity, well, at least epistemic normativity, epistemic normativity is uncontroversial or nearly uncontroversial. It should be uncontroversial. It's real, folks. Because epistemic normativity, well, those are just facts about what's rational to believe or what you ought to believe. And there's definitely facts like that. Say that you're in arithmetic class and you learn all about the number two, and you learn all about the number four, and you learn all about the addition function, right? Should you believe that two plus two equals four? Should you believe that? Is it rational to believe that? Yes, you think so. You think that if someone learns about all of these numbers and all of the arithmetic functions and then fails to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 4, they've made a mistake. They've done something that they shouldn't do, rationally speaking. There's been a cognitive error of some kind. You can only make sense of any of those notions, the notion of error, the notion of a mistake, the notion of some belief being incorrect in that sense. You can only make sense of that if you believe in epistemic normativity, because those are the norms that say you should believe this, and it's when you violate those norms that you've done something with your mind that is incorrect. So you definitely believe in epistemic normativity, so therefore, whatever's going on with the argument from Occam's razor, it's too powerful. It eliminates from existence something that definitely exists. So then the question is, well, what went wrong with it? And Schaefer Landau's diagnosis is that, well, what went wrong is that Occam's razor was applied to the normative domain when really it's only ever applicable to the descriptive domain. It's descriptive entities or descriptive facts that Occam's razor can shave off of your ontology. It doesn't ever shave off normative entities or normative facts. Those are just different. They're not the kinds of things that explain in the first place, maybe. And so therefore, Occam's razor doesn't apply to them. So Occam's razor is still perfectly good. It's just something that doesn't apply to norms, because if it did, it would get rid of norms that there definitely are. And if it doesn't apply to norms, well, then that leaves objective moral norms untouched. OK, so that was the second response that Schaefer Landau gives to the argument from Occam's Razor. Then there's a third response. This one happens very quickly in like one little short paragraph at the end of the chapter, but it's probably the, the coolest move in the chapter. And that's this. Schaefer Landau points out that if the argument from Occam's Razor works in this way, if Occam's Razor gets rid of all normative facts, then Occam's razor undermines itself in a certain way. Do you follow? Here, let's see this by reminding ourselves what Occam's razor says. You remember, you watched the Occam's razor video already, right? But so Occam's razor, Occam's razor, let's just put it way too simply. It says something like this. It says, 
believe the simplest explanation. Believe the explanation that requires you to posit the fewest entities. Maybe that's how we understand simplest. Something like that. Here's the thing. Occam's razor is itself a normative entity. It's an epistemic norm, right? Because, well, believe the simplest explanation, that's really just shorthand for you should or you ought to believe the simplest explanation. Occam's razor isn't a description of what people do believe. It's a normative prescription of what they ought to believe or what they should believe. You should believe the explanation that involves the fewest entities. You should believe the germ theory of disease, not the witch theory of disease. Okay, well, if Occam's razor gets the result that normative entities, that norms, don't exist, then Occam's razor gets the result that Occam's razor doesn't exist. That is, that there's no objective epistemic principle saying that you should believe the simplest explanation. Another way to put this is that Occam's razor fails the test of Occam's razor, right? Is Occam's razor the simplest explanation for all the things that we observe? No, it's not. Think about this. You're sitting down somewhere or standing watching this video, and there's this guy on the screen, and he's talking to you about Occam's razor. And then there's this further question. How do you explain what's going on? Do you need to appeal to the existence of a mind-independent principle, a principle of epistemic rationality that says you should believe the simplest explanation? Does that thing need to exist in order to explain what you're seeing? Well, no, right? Uh, maybe you're seeing this video because there's some um, photons shooting out of the screen, and there's a guy on the other end who once recorded this video, and he said all these things about Occam's razor because maybe he believes that there's a thing called Occam's razor. But that's just a fact about a belief or a certain kind of thought. In order to explain everything you've ever heard about Occam's razor, there doesn't need to exist a mind-independent principle, a real genuine fact that you should believe the simplest explanation. There doesn't need to exist an Occam's razor in order to explain everything that you need to explain. So, the simplest explanation doesn't actually mention Occam's razor. So therefore, you shouldn't include Occam's razor in your ontology, and you shouldn't think there's some normative fact, some normative law out there. This is a normative law, if there ever was one, right? So if Occam's razor works, at least if it works in this way, then Occam's razor doesn't work. That's the problem. And again, Schaefer Landau can point out that this doesn't mean there's something wrong with Occam's razor. It just means that there's something wrong with the, well, unrestricted application of Occam's razor, right? If you apply this principle to normative facts or normative entities, in addition to descriptive ones, then you're gonna get the result that Occam's razor undermines itself, that it refutes itself, right? But if you just restrict Occam's razor to descriptive claims and leave it open, which normative facts, which normative laws there are, then Occam's razor is perfectly fine. But you'll have left objective moral facts untouched.